Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. There is so much here to look at, especially in these things that are being discussed about the cycles of Earth. There is many things. There are many things. There is a time where you should take a look at what is going on. There are many things to look at, and not just the weather. This planet also is on another cycle, and that cycle is one that you have created. So much to consider in all of these, and none of them are frightening. None of them. They happen slowly, and sometimes the slowness of their occurrence is actually what people are seeing and worrying about, not understanding where it's going or the potentials that you would have because of what is happening. Sometimes I will have a subject for all month long, and this is one of them. This particular month, the subject will be timing. And we're going to look at timing in general, what it means and the timing of many things. We're going to look at you, your individual, timing of your life and what might be occurring and some of the, the things we've said about that. We're going to talk about the Earth's timing right now. We're going to talk about Akashic timing, many subjects about timing this month on these programs. So the first one will be the one that is the discussion for the day, the timing on the planet Earth. We could go into the cycles that my partner has just discussed. We don't really have to, because as you proceed, you will see we're right. And there will be some ahas, and there will be some understanding that perhaps is not there today. All we have to do is wait. So we don't have to convince you past what has been said. Just wait, and you'll see. The Earth does its thing on a regular basis. The cycles are very predictable. Just go take a look. And so past that, is there another cycle that is happening? Let me tell you that the cycle that this planet is going through, which is remarkable, is a cycle of consciousness. Is it possible that over time, consciousness starts to improve in how humans treat humans and what they think about one another. Now, history that repeats itself over and over in the past would say no. All you have is war. And then there's a time of recovery. Then there's a time of war. And then there's a time of recovery. And then there's a time of war. Now, you looking at the planet may expect another war. You may even get some little things that would say you're going to have war, but not world war, dear ones. That's going to be a thing of the past. You passed a marker, a remarkable time, where all manner of things happened. It started in 1989 and then beyond, and the precession of equinoxes then began, and all the timing of that. The timing of the precession of the equinoxes was a potential if the Earth would see it. And with the, with the consciousness of the planet starting to then change at that point or not. Now let's take a look just for a moment at what you predicted. You saw this at some level. For you predicted that starting in the year 2000 in your scriptures, there would be wars, perhaps an Armageddon of some kind. Something awful and horrible would take place that would change the planet forever. That was your prophecy. And all of your films that, that show it, remarkable. You destroyed yourselves in some, some way, or the, the earth destroyed you. It was, it's all there to be seen in what you expected. Your films are still showing you an old energy expectation. Very few films are ones where people get excited over a great future. <laughs> B 
because it's human nature as it exists today to be attracted to the doom, to the fear, to the horror. And so that is what you see. But that's not what you're going to get. Because you passed this marker of consciousness some time ago. Now, there would be those that would say, well, there's, there's no evidence of it. And yet we have given you piece after piece after piece to look at of the things being cleaned up, of the remarkable things that you have decided that haven't happened in thousands of years about how you treat each other, about how you, your expectations of treating each other. What happens when one country decides to invade another? Well, let's talk about that. In the past, it was a ho-hum experience. It was expected, absolutely expected. That's what you did. You also gathered around and had a picnic and watched people beheaded. <laughs> and that was an, that's not happening either. There has been a change. Now, what happens today when one country invades another? The entire world is watching. And what was expected in an older age is not going to be expected today. And there will be a reaction, a big reaction, to an old energy concept of one country looking at another and saying, I want it. That's what the old concept was. That's what conquering was all about. One, you, this planet has been filled with waves of conquerors. Just take a look. You know their names. That stopped as well. You see, there has been a consciousness shift already on this planet taking you to today. But what's happening tomorrow? We may talk about that just a little later in the Circle of Twelve. But the timing and the waves of, of change are already here. The cycle that we speak of is a cycle not on this planet. It's a cycle that we have seen in this galaxy. For consciousness shift of planet after planet after planet, when they reach a point of decision, some make those decisions, some don't, and they simply stay as history was. Imagine your planet having never changed much, and what's happened in the past will happen in the future, and there's not a chance it's going to get any better. Well, if that's the case, then why has there been so much care about individuals right now? That's never been the case before. Dear ones, watch what you do right now. Leaders, I'm going to speak to you. Carefully watch what you do. Is it an old energy consciousness of what you were able to do in the past few hundred years? Or is it something the people will not tolerate? careful because these are new times and light is starting to occur leaders if you do the incorrect thing or things that are not in in compassion and higher consciousness you will not last long as leaders that's coming i said that for years i've said that to governments and leaders of governments for years you cannot continue doing the same things you did before because you will not get the same results because the populations that you govern are starting to care more and change more and be more compassionate to one another. And that is what the leadership is going to have to see and mirror in order to stay in power. These are the things that we have said for so long that are coming and now you get to see them. Your planet is starting a correction cycle. Along with the weather changing, this correction cycle is to sustain conscious life on the planet so that you're here and not doomed for a world war of destruction or an Armageddon. In 1993, I gave my partner the words to put in a little book called The End Times. It was a description of the end times, the end of an old time. And in that book, right away, the first thing I said to say to him to write was this. There will be no final destruction. 
It flies in the face of every scripture you've ever seen that said there would be. And that was controversial, very. And now it has actually happened. You sailed through the year 2000, you've gone through the marker of 2012, and here you are in the first of many correction cycles where you're going to see the changes that happen when many people are awakening to the compassion and the caring about each other and expecting their governments to see it too. The first correction cycle has begun, and you are here to see it. Light worker, continue to send light to the leaderships or to all of those who need it, to others who don't believe that this planet is going to survive and show them that you are worthy of it, that you were really all born magnificent. And now that magnificence can start to show on the planet through the people and the light that is coming your way. I'm crying in love with humanity, and for good reason. And so it is. And very gently bring your awareness back into your body. Feel the connection with the energy of the earth. If you've had those beautiful, precious eyes of yours closed, I invite you to open your eyes. And as you become more aware of that connection with the earth, more aware of the physical connection with your body, we're going to move into the next part of our program and it is always such a joy and such a treat when we have a guest who is on the same mission that Lee and I on in terms of waking everyone up to their true potential and their true magnificence. Her name is Laurie Ladd. And before we begin the conversation, I want to just make sure she is there joining us. Laurie, are you there? I am here. Hello. Ah, oh, fabulous. Well, Lee and I want to tell everyone about you, Laurie. There may be some who have never met you. So we want to let you know that Laurie is a teacher, a speaker and an author, and she is guiding humanity through the collective and individual evolution of human consciousness. Now, her teachings include integrating the human experience with the quantum field, understanding human evolution, living in higher states of consciousness and embodying one's sovereignty. She takes the complexity of human evolution and grounds it into simple and digestible concepts. Thank you for that. This is so needed today because things are very complicated. Laurie dedicates her life to assisting humanity in this planetary shift that we are all in, that we've talked about a lot. She is honored to be walking side by side with all of you, and we are so honored to be walking side by side with this program with you, Lori. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to, uh, to be here with both of you and, and your audience right now. So thank you so much. We would like to, we'll just get you going here. Tell us a little bit about, you know, how it happened, but, but uh, when you realized that you were here for something else, perhaps, than you were taught if that happened, and then, of course, right into what is sovereignty. We'll turn you loose. Perfect, yeah. Um, so I knew when I was 13 that I was here to help humanity through um, this massive evolution. Uh, back then, I thought we were going to be kind of pulled off the planet, and um, while the Earth went through her own transition, and come to find out, we're going through the transition with her. Um, and so I started doing my actual work with humanity in 2015, 2016 is when I actually got to work. Um, so it took me quite some time to commit to, to doing this and to understanding what it is. But I always knew 
who I was and what I was here to do. Um, and then it really took off in 2020. Like so many of us, our lives really started to shift and change. And I stepped deeper into walking side by side with humanity, holding their hand through this process of evolution, this physical and energetic process. And I st just started showing up daily and doing these videos daily. And, um, and I haven't stopped. So it's been an honor. And sovereignty has been something that not only do I practice daily, but it's something that surprises me every day because it doesn't stop. There's no end to sovereignty. You don't discover sovereignty and then say, I found it and I'm done and I made it. To me, sovereignty is sort of like love or presence. It just gets deeper and deeper. And the reason I'm so focused on sovereignty is because it truly is the way through this. It's freedom. It's absolute freedom, regardless of the chaotic world that we may find ourselves in. And it's, it's inherent. We are born sovereign. We are also born in a world that is energetically um, like a ping pong, like a, one of those, um, what's it called? Not a ping pong, but um, those little games where you pull the little thing and the, the ball goes in. The pinball machine. Yes. Yeah. yes right. machine. You're just going, you're, you're, you, you know, the, the energetic world is just so, it's so intense. But we forget of course, because we have amnesia, but we forget that we are designed as sovereign humans to be able to energetically navigate this entire world, right? And so to me, sovereignty is understanding that you are safe, that you are free, that you are empowered, that you have choice, that you've never been a victim, even though there are so many situ situations and circumstances in our lives where you will feel like you are a victim, right? It is, it is the truest expression of you and your ability to be both human and multidimensional, right? And so it, it, it starts, to, you, sovereignty is something that you have to peel back. You have to, it's layers. It's really like, okay, so what does it mean that I have choice? What does it mean that I've always been free? What does it mean that I am, um, that my truth is the highest expression for me, right? What do all these things mean? Because we are programmed from a very young age to not be sovereign, because sovereignty is power. Sovereignty, you cannot be controlled when you're sovereign. You can't, right? You, 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 listen, this whole world doesn't work with it, it, when meaning the sort of very kind of dense mm, third dimensional sort of matrix that we find ourselves in. It, it, it will blow up in our faces if every human was sovereign. It wouldn't work. We would see right through it. Right. So uh, fortunately or, or unfortunately, we are born into a world that pulls us out of sovereignty. It makes us feel like we're not safe, that we can't trust ourselves, that we definitely can't trust what we are intuitively feeling. Right. We have to trust the external world first. We have to trust the authority first. Right. We trust what other people tell us. Right. If things happen to us that we don't understand or that we don't like, it's not our fault. It's somebody else's fault. Right. So if you start to kind of peel back how we've been living most of our lives, it is the opposite of sovereignty. And so we are learning how to come back in here your physical body, which is the only place where you can actually find true sovereignty, which is also the only place you can actually find you and your resonance, right? And starting to follow that, 
starting to follow you and who you are and what you believe and what you know to be true, right? And you, you start moving into that space and you start realizing, oh my God, it doesn't matter what happens out there in the world because your state of being, your state of being is free. Your state of being is safe. Your state of being is, it cannot be taken from you. And when you really start to trust that, when you start to trust th that you are designed to be safe in this world, physically and energetically, so there's an energetic field around us, around every human body that keeps us energetically safe. I always like to call it like um, the bumper cars. Um, we are designed to sort of energetically bump up against everything else in the world Right. And the second you bump up against it, you feel it. Oh, my God, that didn't feel good. Oh, that felt OK. That person. I don't like being with that person. That that room that I walked into felt weird. Right. But and you're designed to feel safe experiencing it. Wow, that's interesting. Don't like that. Like this. Don't like that. Right. But because we forgot that that's how it works. We felt unsafe. We felt like people were doing things to us. If I walk into a room and someone's angry and I feel that person's anger because I don't understand sovereignty, I feel as if they just impacted me, right? They just changed my mood. And it's like, no, with sovereignty, you understand that you're just energetically bumping up against another individual who's angry. You're feeling it. But you're designed as consciousness in the human body, in the human form, experiencing the human journey. You are designed to safely feel everything. And then it becomes a choice whether you want it to impact you or not. It becomes a choice. The other beautiful thing that I love so much about sovereignty is that Inherently, everyone is sovereign, even though they don't understand that. And so when you are experiencing relationships and you understand that everybody is sovereign, you start to realize that your job is not to change anyone. A sovereign human doesn't change another sovereign human because they understand as sovereign beings, whether they are aware of it or not, they are choosing their experience. They are choosing their reality. They're choosing all of it. And if I'm sovereign, experiencing myself as sovereign, and I'm watching another human experience their life and they are aware or unaware of their sovereignty, most of the time they're unaware of it, I'm allowing them to be unconsciously sovereign. And so you start to just allow, you stop trying to change people. You stop trying to force your opinions onto people or your truths onto people, right? You begin to have a different dialogue with humans. This isn't to say that if somebody's bothering you, you don't say anything, or if you're having an argument, you don't say anything. You're always honoring your truth and your experience, but it's your truth. It's your experience. And the other individual gets to have their experience and their truth. So it really starts to change the way you view all relationships. It changes the way that you view the whole world. Because when you really start to understand, wait a second, if I am designed to be safe in this world, right, which we are, the body was designed to be able to navigate an energetic world, right? It wasn't just designed to be a physical form and, and good luck down there, good luck being able to navigate energy. No, it's an energetic form with an energetic field around it for a reason, sovereignty, and so when you start to realize that the body is, 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 is designed, it's this, it's this powerful, beautiful intelligence that knows how to carry you through this. Then you start to feel like, um, like I've got this, wait a second, maybe I'm, maybe I'm good. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm, maybe I can do this. Maybe there is something to this sovereignty.
And it's about practicing, right? How do I practice that? What does sovereignty even feel like? What does it feel like? But because most of us don't know what sovereignty even feels like, right? Most of us aren't even in our bodies most of the time, right? We're in our mind, we're in our head, we're like floating all over the place. We're trying to go into the, the past, we're in the future. Sovereignty is present, right? Sovereignty is present. It's, it's right here, it's right now, right? And it's, it's difficult. It, it takes a lot of awareness. Sovereignty also requires the observer, right? You've got to be able to disassociate or observe your experience as opposed to being it. So if you are still identifying as your emotions or as your beliefs, as your thoughts and as your behaviors, then you are going to struggle with sovereignty because sovereignty requires you to understand that you're none of it, that it's merely an experience that you're having. And when you start doing that, you start to become empowered. You start to realize that you're choosing everything, right? So sovereignty and the observer go hand in hand. You are, um, you navigate both uh, side by side. They assist each other, right? They assist each other. And then what you start realizing with sovereignty is you stop trying to fix yourself. You stop trying, there's nothing wrong with you. Now we're always quote unquote sort of healing, sort of, I have my own thing about healing, but um, you start from a sovereign observer perspective, instead of fixing or changing yourself, what you start to do is you start to honor yourself. Like, wow, look at the human experience that I've had. Look at the human journey that I've been going through and going down and, and what I've had for the past 40 something years or however old you are. Look at the book that's been written by me, right? And there's an honoring around it. That, 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 that once you start doing that, then not only are you no longer believing that you are the experiences that you're having, but it allows you to step deeper into sovereignty, your, your innate natural way of being. It doesn't mean that you don't sort of choose to change your limiting beliefs or you choose to change behaviors that don't serve you, but you're no longer fighting against it. You're no longer fighting against yourself or fighting against the world. There's nothing to fight against when you are sovereign. It's like you're in this big battlefield, right? Or this um, uh, arena and you understand how it works. And so, yeah, there's going to be um, people that are going to come at you. There's going to be experiences that are going to try to drag you down. But if you understand that you are good, that you've got your, your, your shield and you are prepared and you've been practicing and you know how to navigate it, right? It's, it's going to be a breeze. It, it, even though there's going to be chaos everywhere and people are going to be running around and who knows what the arena is going to look like, you're going to be okay. And this is what we're practicing. This is one of the greatest gifts I think that 2022 has offered us is starting to understand sovereignty, starting to understand, wait a second, hold on. My whole life, I have been pulled out of the one place where I am most safe, the one place where I am most free, the one place where I am most me. And that's right here. That's, that's home. That's the body. And the body says, I've got you. Let me show you how this works. You don't have to, you know, the ego thinks that it's going to be able to control this. The ego doesn't understand the energetic world. The ego only understands the physical world. And so the ego is trying to navigate all of this and the body's like, chill. Higher self is saying to, to the ego, relax. The body and me, the higher self, we, we understand how this energetic world works. We're going to show you. We're going to show you how when you settle down and let go of controlling everything, that the world is designed to wow you. The world is designed to surprise you and to provide you with everything you need. It's, it's the inverted version of what you have believed this world is all about. 
right? So it's, um, it's, it's, it's daily practice. It's, um, it's constant daily practice, this sovereignty. I find it so fascinating, Laurie, that the word you have chosen to convey a concept that really is a multidimensional concept and sovereignty is the word that you have used. Is that something also that your guides shared with you? Your whole explanation is beyond the word to me. Also, I don't want to, I don't want in our time a lot, I don't want to miss uh, Reset 2022 as well. (laughs) I've given you two things to to talk about. Yeah. Sovereignty has... um, it's been more of um, what I've been experiencing. I can't remember when it really uh, plopped into my lap. Um, it's so, it, but it's been it's been something that I, Lori, have been um, unraveling and exploring and dissecting so deeply, um, and that's why I I I, I, I speak of it. In, in the way that I do, because it, it encompasses everything. It's, yes. it's everything. Um, and it's, it's what I've been living with and it, it, it wows me. It, it, I'm, I get, I'm, in, I'm in awe of, of how sovereignty works. Um, so it's not necessarily my guides. My guides are pretty quiet around sovereignty. Um, so, but, um, yeah, it's just been my own personal journey of it that's really catapulted me into um, teaching about it more and more. And it really does, like you said, un- encompasses the whole multidimensional human experience, really. Yeah, yeah. and it does wow us. I never yeah. thought I would have this in depth conversation about one word, sovereignty. And I don't think I truly understood the entirety of what that word means applied to us as humans. So that is so powerful what you're doing and what you're sharing. I know there's other powerful things that you're sharing with people and Lee briefly mentioned it. You're doing an online course now called Reset 2022. Now that sounds really exciting. Yes. It's, I've never done a course before. So it was my first, I don't, I don't like commitment. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know, but, uh, so I like to do things like, um, one time and boom, but I did a, um, in December, I did a live four week course and it's, it really, this course about reset 2022, it stems from my book and it really, I mean, I have no words for it. It starts with this grand, big perspective of who are you as consciousness? How did you get into the human body? What does it mean that you moved into the human body? Um, The awareness of that, the awareness of popping out into the human experience and the matrix that you live in and what, what occurs, all the, where does trauma come from, right? How does your subtle bodies how does it interpret energy in order to create actual trauma in the body? So we, I break these things, these concepts down into new ways of understanding and seeing it. And it's not new. I see this course as a remembrance. I see everything I do as, and teach as a remembrance, a remembrance that there are layers to how you are going to view your human experience. And when you start to use a deeper layer or a deeper lens of awareness, um, you start to crack the codes of how this human experience actually works. And then it becomes easy. So Reset 2022 is really about breaking past the kind of conditioning and the programming um, and the ways in which you have seen yourself and your human journey and the trauma and the, and the, the limiting beliefs and all of that, the, the way that you communicate, the way you connect to your guides and your higher self, all of that is dissected in a very profound but simple way that allows you to start to see you and it allows you to start to see your human experience um, from a more crisp 
lens and it's um it's life changing it's it's really it's life changing and the last the, i think it's um the last um week that i the last week week 4 is all about sovereignty it's about sovereignty and resonance what's resonance how do you feel into resonance and um but yeah it's a it's it's a profound course and um it's life changing uh, there's also um a really profound meditation in there and that I did for 60 minutes and um, a cellular kind of DNA uh, clearing and activation as well. So it's, um, I'm very proud of it. Very proud of it. It's. Would you, very, would very you very say powerful. that you're getting this um, as a download as an intuitive, you never wanted to do a course and here it comes and bam, you're given the information for it. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. I My guides you. are like, <laughs> <laughs> I love that you started by saying, I don't want commitment. Yeah. And your finishing statement was just how in awe of what was delivered once you got over that hurdle of yeah. doing the commitment. So you are an example mm. of being in that sovereign being. Well, talk, and talk about a person, through. person who doesn't like commitment. You are doing a daily video. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Have you ever thought of that? About <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. But that that feels different because it's like I just wake up and then I do the video and then I'm I'm off. But in December, actually in November, my guide said you're gonna do a month long course, and I was mm -hmm. like, oh God, yeah, really? Like, and um, and and um, no holds barred. The way I the way I do things is so I sort of had the outline of the course. <laughs> But um, I didn't really know what was going to be taught. So what happens is the day, no joke, the day before or the morning of the course, I will sit for about five to seven hours. I'll get up very early and I will download the entire course or whatever that the teaching is for the morning. And I'm talking like hours of just writing it out, writing it out, writing it out. So it's very present for me, even though... Yep. It's a course that's sort of planned and it just comes through. And I'm like, I don't know where that came from. Obviously I know, but um, the, 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 the teaching is right there. And then I just go and teach it. And then the next week I'm like, I don't know what it's going to be. And then I wake mm -hmm. up and here it comes. You know? well, don't, don't be surprised. Um, I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> if after you've done and you go, okay, that's all, oh, that was great. And all great that now you get course number two. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that it's a reset 2022 because it's more than a, a reset. Mm -hmm. We are in uncharted waters. Mm -hmm. We are facing energies on the planet, a shift on the planet that has never been experienced before. Crying always says the history that we had doesn't apply anymore. We're creating new ground. And so the reset, I, for me, what you just shared, it's perfect it's name. more than just breaking down what was old. It's about that preparation of what is yet to come. Yeah. Hitting the reset button. I, I think a, a lot of people understand that. Yes. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it's, uh, it's about preparation. And it's about, for me, it was about um, upgrading the human that you are, really mm -hmm. stepping into a more upgraded version of you letting the the old version of us that we're so familiar with that we're so comfortable with but that we know doesn't serve us any longer mm -hmm. understanding or slowly starting to to play with letting that version go and how do you do that and i have always believed always that it's designed to be easy that it's not designed to be difficult going through this um, even though there are days I have where I'm like, this is so challenging. This is this this internal work is so so difficult. But beyond the um, the judgment around it or the lens in which I'm using it, it is quite simple um, going through this. But it is absolutely unequivocally a preparation for what is coming. My guides always say that mm -hmm. um, yeah. that. Yeah. Every single day in the last two years has been a preparation. And have you been preparing? 
Well, I think what is wonderful is you are offering our beautiful Cryon community a special. They are getting 25% off that course. And so the details are in your chat window. The chat angels are putting that in there as I speak. And it's also going to be there on the replay page that you can access. So final words, Laurie, before we have to take a break. Final words, man, the courage to be able to devour your human experience right now um, and to remember, 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 remember why you're here, that it's not an accident um, that you came here for all of this. And it is a slow baby step uh, process of peeling back the programming and um, and remembering who you are and why you came here, right? And compassion is everything. So having compassion for yourself as you navigate this massive evolutionary shift in human consciousness uh, is the key. Well, thank you so much, Laurie. I think humanity is in good hands by having teachers like yourself walking us, holding our hands and giving us so many treasures. So thank you so much. It's been wonderful having this conversation. We are now going to take a 10 minute break and then we'll see you back here for the Circle of 12. Well, welcome back everyone. I just found Laurie to be such a delight and she has been giving everybody's cryons messages, but in her own language with new words and so simple, so easy to follow. She's a great communicator and so happy she's on the planet right now. And just uh, what, you know, I, I'm resounding with the messages because they're, they're messages that I really want to hear. Absolutely. And yeah. we are so in need of that reset. I love the title of her course, Reset 2022. Yeah. I really feel we are all yeah. recalibrating who we used to be into yeah. who we are becoming. I know. Thank and you, Laurie, for yeah. being with us so much. Absolutely. So she was inspiring. And I want to just let our audience know you are also inspiring. So much so that Lee and I have created a new section within our program. Well, we have indeed, and we have a name for it, and we've set it up to honor all of you, and it's mm -hmm. called um, Miracle Moments. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's about the program you're watching right now, which is a healing program. So we really want to honor all of those who really need a healing right mm -hmm. now in whatever form. We're <clears throat> inviting you to participate in a way that should come naturally for all of you. In this week's Miracle Moments, where all of us can come together and help others, we're asking you to participate in, you can call it prayer if you want to, you can call it giving energy if you want to. Um, I'm going to ask Mana to explain how this works and know that together we can create the right energy at the right time for those ready to receive it. Absolutely. And so there have been people within this community requesting help from others to send them for healing. And because we are connected in a quantum field, those requests are known at a soul level by your higher self. And so we would like to have everybody participate in sending focused thoughts and love and healing energy to those who have requested to receive it. So let's join together, creating some miracle moments for those who have asked for it. I invite you to send love, compassion, and healing energy to those who have specifically requested this energy. And just trust that it is going to those who have requested it. And let us now just take a moment to send love, peace, compassion, healing energy to all the family and friends connected to those who have requested a miracle moment.
Let us now take a moment to send energy to all children all over the globe and especially to those children who have had their parents requesting our help to send love and energy to them. And let us take a moment to remind ourselves that we are both a transmitter and a receiver. And so allow yourself to receive that reciprocal wave coming back to those who you are sending this wave of love, peace, benevolence, compassion. And as we allow ourselves to receive that wave, we're able to amplify what we send and transmit back out. And finally, let us not forget the beautiful, precious animals that we share this planet with, and especially those animals that are the loving companions of the divine humans. And so let us send out gratitude and thanks to the precious animals. And let us send a wave of healing energy to any of the animals that are in distress right now. And so the effects of this group creating a coherence of loving, benevolent, peaceful energy will continue in the field and just trust that we have indeed created some miracle moments for those who require it. And with this energetic posture, we can tell Cryon, indeed, we are ready to come a little closer. Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon. Come a little closer. There's a great deal changing on this planet, but one thing remains the same. The love of spirit for you and the state in which you were born. A creature, if you wish to call yourself that, made in the image of the creator. Have you heard that before? And what is that image? Since God hasn't a physical form, what image do you see when you think of spirit, the creator? The image is compassion and love, and that is what you were created in, created magnificent. The circle of 12 is a reflection of that. It's an enhancement, if you wish, in the general knowledge that you've been getting for some time about who the creator might be and who you might be in relation to that. The relationship if there is one, if you believe there is one, to the creative source which you call God. There are those, and for many, many hundreds of years, who've told you that God is in the sky and God is God and you are human, and you would never meet that in any form. You'd never meet that energy. You can't. And that means that the separation that you have is complete. Like a big giant wall, you'll never be able to get to that place where the creator is. Dear ones, that particular message is not the way it is. It truly is not. Any more than you would give birth to a beautiful child and wall it up and never talk to it again. You're on your own. Send them out. Hope they make it. That's not love. That's not the kind of compassionate love creation. Did you have God is love. Have you heard that before? You cannot create 
God is love message and then at the same time say God is also one who will torture you or God has a wall or God you can't talk to God that God of love who loves you beyond measure don't talk to him don't talk to her there are oxymorons there things that don't make any sense at all and what we have wished to tell you for all of these years is that the creative source knows you because you are a piece of it made in the image of the creator, not accidentally. Made in the image of the creator means made in love, magnificent, beautiful, compassionate soul that you are. So the endeavor is here to teach you that, to let you understand that none of you, none of you were born to be victims on this planet, none of you. And then if you find yourself wondering about if you are, you might consider these words. Or even for a moment or two, try to understand what we, are, what we are giving you on a weekly basis, that perhaps it's different than you were told. Is it possible that there's nothing random that happens to humans? Is it possible that instead, humans attract to them what their consciousness expects. And if you buy into that, then you're buying into the, another precept, and that is that consciousness is energy. And dear ones, if you haven't heard the news, that has now been proven. Your consciousness is a valid energy on the planet. And with that, you can understand perhaps why what you think you create and what have you been thinking lately? And we leave it at that. There is so much here that we want to give you that is in beauty and love and compassion for you to understand that this particular planet is going through a beautiful, beautiful transition. A cycle. As I said earlier in the channeling, it is rediscovering that which it is not only capable of, but that is its lineage. You are representing a cycle that has happened so many times before. And in order to show you this, we have to get very esoteric, and I hope you're ready for that today. These are things you may not believe, but we're going to go to a place of core truth called your soul. There's a bridge we cross every circle of 12 that represents a bridge from the known to the unknown or four dimensions to all dimensions. It's a tough bridge to cross for many. You cross it and you still have your four dimensional perception. So anything else that occurs, you don't understand it. So get multidimensional with me right now as we cross this bridge yet again in the circle of 12 one more time into that which is an area that is beautiful beyond understanding where many things happen that would never happen in this particular dimensionality of four that you that you live in so let's go there now let's cross the bridge together take my hand crossing the bridge is a remarkable experience if you really cognize what it means. You step into that perfect part of yourself. A part of yourself that there are those who said you never could do that and you're doing it now. Come with me and do this and, and understand the reality of so much of it is here. It truly can be a real experience to you even though what I'm going to present will seem to be exceptionally esoteric exceptionally there's a door I want you to go through that will not lead to the theater but it leads to a place that you've been before you go into this room and there's a person you have met before a person that means that this time as we did before we let you see your perception of what an entity ought to look like it's a person. You will humanize it even though it's an energy. 
It needs to be a person with a personality. And you're going to meet this person. One person, not a theater, who's about to show you something spectacular. Absolutely spectacular. This is a, an entity, if you want to call it that, that perhaps we've met and perhaps we've not met. It just depends upon what you call him or her. This is a combination of a star master and a time master. Now there is a combination of similarities to those two. They belong together. You've always heard of space and time. But this day, this star master who you've met before is going to take you back in time and show you the stars. And the stars he's going to show you, or she is going to show you, depending upon who you've met today, is not yourself. You are not going to see the earth in any of these. But instead, you're going to see the cycle of the earth represented in other times and other places in your own galaxy. Premise. Is it possible that what you are going through right now on this planet, others have gone through before? Or perhaps you have gone through before, if you believe that your soul was on other planets? And if so, and if that's true, and if you see it today, that means that at some level you remember it, and many are. That's part of an awakening, dear ones a very, very subtle remembrance of something on this planet that's happening where you are saying, it's about time. I expected this. Here it comes. Meet the star master who is also a time master. And this star master is going to take you somewhere far, far away. In this galaxy, a series of planets which today you call Orion. And he's going to show you something, that there was life there, much like yours. But this is not the real time. We're in the past, dear ones. And in this constellation, which you will call Orion, the constellation in the sky you call Orion is not what we're talking about. It's the star. It's the, the planets around the star. And there's more than one just like with your particular solar system. It's very similar all over the galaxy. There is the sun. There are planets. We take you to one in particular. And on that planet, which has no name at the moment, we'll call it within the influence of Orion, you will see a system a cycle where many are going through what you're going through right now. And if you took a look at their history, you would have seen that there were wars between wars and there are not now. I want you to take a look closely because the star master is showing you something and he's speeding up the time to show you this planet went into what we would call ascension status. That only means that light and dark changed so much that there was much more light than dark in consciousness and they grew up and they started to understand the physics that the same physics that the, that the creator has the kind of physics that allow you to travel anywhere you want to with your consciousness instead of your body. And what they did with that is they went someplace else and planted the seed that they had. I want to take you to where they planted it. Or where the influence is where they planted it. I'd like to take you to where the Octorians live. Dear ones, there's, there's been so many who say that the Octorians and, and the Syrians and so many others all had something in common. And I will tell you what they did. There was a little bit of DNA in all of them that were the same. And someday in the far, far future, when you meet them, 
they'll show it to you. And they will smile and show you yours. And they'll say, this is the part that we all have. And those you call the Octorians, they had a history that was very similar. And if you take a look at them and what happened on there, the Time Masters is, is manipulating all these things so you can take a look and see up close and all. And your mouth starts to open up wide when you see that they went through the same thing. Low consciousness to high. And even though the seeds were planted at the same biology, they had to go through the things in order to grow up, and they did. And you'll see where they went, as well as carrying the seeds of Orion and where they went. And they had the influence on where they went to a place that's very close to you, very close, called the Seven Sisters, the Pleiadians. And if you want to take a look at them, we have told you. They had several habitable planets, and it was a mess, and there was horror there. They even had mass genocide. They came from the darkest place, and they made it. Tens of thousands, tens of thousands before you ever had life on your Earth. They were in the process of the ascension planet that they became. I told you this would be unbelievable. I told you this would be esoteric. We're talking about timing today. Timing. And when the Pleiadians reached that point of the ones who preceded them and the ones who preceded them, they also sent their consciousness somewhere else. And we call it Earth. You are in the process of a cycle that has happened repeatedly in this galaxy. It's a cycle of awakening to the creative source which created all of you. I told you this would be hard for you to understand or believe. Perhaps when we started talking about it, you rolled your eyes and you said, well, enough of that. Your DNA is stuff from the stars. You were not here by accident, never created here by accident. There was an influence that got you here, dear ones, and kept you here. For you to go through the cycle, if you chose to. And when it came time, you did. And that is the cycle you're in now. That's the timing of this planet. Beautiful it is. And we have said this before. Your history will not be what you are going into anymore. It's not going to repeat itself. You're going into uncharted territory that no one has seen on this planet, but it has been seen by your ancestors on the other stars. So there is a remembrance of what to do next and what happens. Blessed are the human beings who see that light at the end of this tunnel that you are going through right now, which would seem so dark. But it has the seeds of magnificence. Your future is bright. That's what we see, just as we saw it on all the ancestors. Stay and let that star master give you the details to show it to you over and over so you believe it. Ask the question, is there really something like this? Is it really true or is it not true? Ask spirit if it's true and see if you get a resonance that indeed, not only is it true, but you might have been there to see it. I am crying in love with all of you. Stay, stay, and revel in your history and the beauty of where you're going. And so it is. <laughs>